Hello and welcome to another online service for Hudson Community Baptist Church. Uh, my name is Phil. It's my joy to welcome you such as it is. And even though we're getting quite used to these online services, it's still not the ideal and it's not what we long to do together. Uh, we obviously look forward to the time when we can gather all together as a church and uh, shake hands and uh, even uh, put a hand on shoulder and, uh, and even have hugs because this is an important part of, of what it means to, to love one another. But of course, we live in a peculiar time and it seems like a long time before we'll be able to do those things. And so we, uh, we're thankful that we can do this together, uh, even as we remember that uh, it's not all that we would want it to be. Well, I would like to open this service with taking a look at a couple of verses in Matthew 11. At that time, Jesus declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. And then Jesus says these famous words, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Well, recently I... I finished a book called Gentle and Lowly, which was an extended meditation on this truth that Jesus is gentle and lowly in heart. And one of the things that the book pointed out was this is the only place in the New Testament where it describes what Jesus is in heart or what God is in heart. And that elevates this description of him to a place of central importance for who Jesus is. And while the complex and complete picture of, of God's character and even Jesus' character, of course, in the New Testament um, is more nuanced, this book really helped to take a deep dive into the truth that at the core of who God is and at the center of his heart is, is gentleness, lowliness, love, mercy, and grace. And one of the things that um, the author pointed out, and in his, in his study, uh, he, he was drawing continually from sources dating back uh, up to 400 years uh, in a number of Puritan writers who, uh, before the time of Facebook and cell phones and Twitter, seemed to have a, a particular knack for meditating um, deeply on the truths of the scriptures and then writing those things down for our benefit these 400 years later. And so uh, that gave the book uh, a deep grounding in the historical Christian faith. And um, it was really edifying. And uh, so I wanted to share that with you because I think at a time like this, when many of us are tempted to, uh, are tempted to, to feel anxious and uncertain, uh, certainly there's, there's so much upheaval in our world right now, it's so important to remember who God is. We need that anchor in our souls of God's character and His unchanging nature. And if you're His child, uh, what this book pointed out to me in such a deep way was that His, His, His heart for us is so certain. And no matter our, our sins or our struggles, our worries, uh, we can come to Him. At one point, uh, the author quotes uh, one of these old saints, and he said, if we knew God's heart for us, we would come to him more readily and more often than we do. And I think that's true. And so this morning, I want to invite you, um, whatever it is that you're facing or carrying, to bring that to the Lord to remember his very great promises for us and uh, to trust his goodness. In the Psalms, we read that uh, the Lord is good and does good. And that's just a beautiful, concise summary of God's character and his action. We can't always see how all these things will work out. 
We can't look at our circumstances around us and deduce from them that God is good and does good because we haven't seen the end of it all yet. We're called to trust and have faith. And we can have faith in a God that is so good and has a heart like this. So I hope that's encouraging to you. And I hope today as we worship the Lord through song and as we hear God's word preached, that it'll, it'll minister to your hearts and that you'll come to the Lord. To the Lord. Let's pray. Father, I want to thank you for sending your son Jesus and revealing who you are to us and to the whole world. Lord, I pray that you use this service to bless and build up your church for your name's sake. Amen. Join me as we lift our voices together and worship our Lord this morning.
thank you, Emmy Lou, for that song. And now we come to our announcements. Uh, you probably have noticed that we have recently started having a, uh, a short children's service for our wonderful kids. And I just want to say thank you to those of you working hard to put that together. No one really uh, demanded that, but you know, we have just such wonderful leaders and volunteers. They just wanted to put something together to bless our kids and keep feeding them with God's truth and uh, with, with fun, uh, engaging things for them to, uh, to, to partake in. So thank you for those who are doing that. And, and that just also reminds me um, that, uh, you know, I just want to thank the people who are making these online services possible, putting in a lot of hours and effort, those leading worship, those preparing sermons, the technical people behind the scenes. Uh, a big thank you to all of you. Um, last week, uh, we tried something uh, new uh, in terms of having it, uh, having the service stream live, or at least play at 10.30, uh, actually, sorry, it was 10 o'clock in the morning on Sunday. So we're gonna do the same thing. And this is to, um, to encourage all of us to experience the service at the same time, you know, inching a little bit closer to the kind of experience we have when we actually gather in this room. Uh, as a congregation. So if you'll go to the church's website on Sunday morning, you'll see that there will be a live stream starting at 10 o'clock in the morning. Of course, it is still the pre-recorded service, but it gives us a chance to watch it all together. There's a place where we can exchange comments and chat, and uh, it's just a nice touch. So that'll be Sunday morning. And um, and of course, we, we continue to uh, keep a close eye on the finances in this time. Um, I, was, uh, I was thinking as a father, you know, with my kids, that uh, it's my responsibility to teach them about stewardship. And so uh, I've been trying to think through how do you teach your children to, uh, to handle money well uh, with wisdom and of course with godly principles. And really it boils down to some pretty basic principles. Um, and so this is what I told them, I gave them some money and I said, everything we have comes from God. And it's not really our money, it's His money that He's allowed us to have for a time. And ultimately, He entrusts it to us to use for His kingdom. We need to use some of that to take care of our needs. Uh, we use some of that to save for things that we want to save for. And we want to give some of that back to Him uh, as, a, as an act of worship and as a recognition that all we have comes from him. And the most important thing we're about as children of God is his kingdom on this earth. So um, I don't know if the lesson sunk in deep. I know it was good for me to think about and to be reminded of. And I wanted to share that with you as uh, we continue to, to be in this time when I know many people are struggling and um, as a church, we're seeing it as well. So we just pray that uh, we know that the Lord will provide for us. And uh, so we're thankful for that. Uh, lastly, I wanted to encourage you that uh, things are moving along in the pastoral search process, and we hope to be able to share some exciting news with you very soon. Please be in prayer um, in these days for the pastoral search team, for the elders, for uh, the candidates um, who are looking at our church, and that God would just orchestrate all these things uh, and bring about uh, the right result that will ultimately be a blessing to this church and be for his glory. So now uh, let's take a moment and pray, and then we will go on to uh, the last worship songs before the sermon. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this church. Lord, I thank you for each and every person who uh, calls this their church home. Father, I thank you for uh, the eight people that have just completed a membership class and who feel drawn to join this community of faith, even in a time when we can't gather physically Lord, that's so encouraging. Lord, we, uh, we pray that you would sustain uh, your people, that you would encourage your people. And Lord, we pray that you would provide for each and every one of us and for your church. And Lord, at this time, it's forcing us to really trust you. And that's a good thing. Everything we have does come from you. And uh, Lord, we're thankful, Lord, that we get to see you provide and come through time after time. Father, I pray for uh, my brothers and sisters that you would uh, bless them and sustain them. I pray these things in Jesus' name. 
Amen.
And welcome, I thank you that you can join me as we delve into God's Word. Let's pray as we come before the Lord our God. God, we thank you that you are mighty. You are mighty to save. Your works have been established. Your kingdom is sure and forever. Oh God, blessed are you in all the earth, Lord. The earth and everything in it is all yours. We thank you for salvation through the working of your Son, Jesus Christ, and his death on the cross, Lord. We have every reason for hope and a future and to rejoice over the forgiveness of our sins. And we thank you, O God, for sending your Spirit into our hearts. And I ask, please, that you would send your Spirit um, his words to proceed from my mouth at this time, Lord, that as we look at your word, we would understand a greater knowledge of you and your truth. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, through your Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, today, I would like to take a look at man's purpose. The big question, why are we here? What are we supposed to be about? What are we supposed to do? You know, and it's during times like this that we have the pandemic, that we have many opportunities and time to sit down and reflect on our life and say, hey, what is important to me? And it's great to see the amount of families that have been growing and, and, and coming together and, and um, situations actually being worked out. Also, some of the situations being caused as well, I won't deny it, but it's, it's times like these too that we tend to ask big questions. And at some point in a person's life, they do ask this question. And in fact, I would say we ask it more often than you would care to think. We ask it almost every morning. Why should I get out of bed? And we reason with each other as to why. And we don't have oftentimes a clear and concise reason 
on why we do things because sometimes we forget. Actually, oftentimes we forget. So today I'd like to look at man's purpose, the why we are here. This is an important question. Motiv because it be, this question gives you the motivation and the, the answer to this question is, by, is the mode at which you form your doctrines. That is just a doctrine meaning a, a set of rules, a set of way that you go about your life. So knowing our purpose is really, really important. Let's dig in. If you have your Bibles with you, please turn with me to Psalm 139, verses 13 to 16. This is God's word. For you formed my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works that my soul knows very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the lowest depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed, and in your book they are all written, the days fashioned for me, when as yet there were none of them. Now, at cursory glance, you might think, well, what does this have to do with man's purpose, James? This talks about God being marvelous, and we go, yes. But to understand our purpose, we need to understand who we are as human beings. And in here, we find our first clue. Or not our first clue, our first statement. In verse 14, the psalmist says, I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. This is very interesting. We are created. We have been formed and made by a creator, by God. We are not some random molecules and atoms that came together and woof, we came into being. No, 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 no. A skillful and intelligent designer created us. God Almighty, the omnipotent, sovereign king over all that is, made each and every one of us. The word here, fearfully, it... In the Hebrew, it's to convey this awe, this marvelousness, this beyond the extraordinary. So we are fearfully, we are and wonderfully made. God did so very concisely, very precisely. He says here, he skillfully wrought. So he didn't just, again, throw some paint at a wall and go, let's have a human being. Uh, yeah, sure, we'll take that. No, 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 no. God crafted. He planned. It says here, it says that days fashioned for me is in his book written down before there were even days. God has a plan. God has a purpose. And when he carries these things out, he does so with precision and carefully. He's not reckless. He doesn't do things without abandonment. God is not some random being. He is very, very keen on what he does. And we can take great uh, solace in that and know that we are made fearfully and wonderfully. Okay, so that was point number one, being made fearfully and wonderfully. Now, what else about being made? And of course, for this, we're going to have to turn to Genesis, in the beginning. In fact, we're going to turn right to the beginning. Genesis chapter 1. If you have your Bibles, please turn with me. Genesis chapter 1. We're going to read 26 to 28, the creation of man. Then God said, Let us make man in our image. According to our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Image being very important here. He created them, male and female. 
Then God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. All right. So, point number two. There's four points, by the way. Point number two, we are made in God's image. This is a big topic, and many sermons could be preached on the image of God and the likeness of God and being made in it, and it permeates all through Scripture. So I'm going to try to condense it and keep it on track here a little bit um, without going into great detail. So, as an image bearer, what is an image bearer? What does it be made to be made an image? Well, you have a father. I have a father. I have children. They all have a father. Now, we look at our children and we notice that they carry similar traits, similar looks, similar mannerisms. And we would say, often, I hear oftentimes, you're the splitting image of your mother or your father. And we say that because they represent and they carry with them a portion of their parents. And so as image bearers being made, that is being made in the image of God, we carry with us certain traits and characteristics of God. Some of which being, for instance, we have a soul. We have uh, access to the spiritual realm through, through the, our, our soul and our spirit. The animals don't have this. The living and creeping things of the earth, the plants, they don't have this. Only people do. What else do we have here? Um, we have a blessing. God created the animals and created the earth, created the fish and the birds, and he looked at it all and he said, it is good. But he blessed the man and the woman that he had made, because they were different from everything and everybody else. So we can know that we are different from everything and everybody else around us. So we're not going to come back as a bumblebee. We are not going to come back as some fish in the sea or come back as some mystical energy when we die or return to some mystical place or no. God, again, is very precise and very clear about what we are. And one of the things we are, it says here, is that we are male and female. We are not uh, both an it. A, we have roles and responsibility that God has set up from the beginning. So one of our purposes is to maintain the roles and responsibilities that God has given us as males and females in all that that re entails in each of our lives and we're all different. We're all in different situations. We're all born in different places, different families. But the principle of being a male and a female, of having a role and a responsibility to work with what you have is yours. And we'll continue on with that a little bit. Um, God said, be fruitful. Now, we always say be fruitful and multiply. But there are two words here. Be fruitful and be multiplying. There are two separate things here. Being fruitful is to behave wisely with our time and our energies, to be productive, to produce fruit, hence the word fruitful. So how are you working your life? You want one of your purposes in life is to be fruitful. Don't squander what God has given you. Don't squander your health. Don't overeat. Exercise, love your neighbor, take your time, take your money, invest it wisely, invest it in stocks, invest it in people, depending where God has you at in your life. And this is where you need to pray and ask God for this. And we're going to get into that a little bit later, some more. Another thing we have here, multiply. We are called to fill the earth, multiply and fill the earth. We tend to view children as a nuisance often sometimes as they take our, sap our energy and our resources. This is not the case. 
another purpose of our man of being a human being is to have children is to propagate is to go out and fill the earth this is a god-given mandate now i know there are people that they can't have kids and you can fill the earth and multiply many different ways but don't neglect it or just brush off the subject of children lightly god has instituted and commanded us to do something about filling the earth and spreading the seed so just this doesn't mean have 18 kids this doesn't mean have kids if there's situations in your life you need to talk to god and discover what god has to you to do in each of these areas because we're all different not two not two of us are the same but still carefully and skillfully made now one last thing from here that we can pull. And that is, we are to fill the earth and subdue it. And to have dominion over the entire earth. Just as marriage imitates the, the relationship between Jesus the, being the, the, uh, the groom and us, his church, being the bride. So also too, here we have another picture and another instance where God, who is sovereign, he controls and has made everything. And then he made this earth. Then he made man, put us in it and says, I made you my image and I am going to give you responsibilities to tend to this garden and everything in, in it. You are to rule over the earth that I have made you. So we can explore the earth. We can try different things. We can discover what God has made. And he said, go for it. Science, love it. It's amazing. Looking under a microscope and discovering new ways and new things and even things of old that God has done from the beginning. So again, what does it have to do with man's purpose? Well, we're to go discover. We're to go and be about the work that we have to do in each of our lives. So, Point number one, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Point number two, we have been made in the image of God, and some of that entails. But it still doesn't answer the question of why are we here? So we have some things of things to do, and the Bible is full of things to do, but we are looking for the why. And we know, though, that we are made in the image of God, fearfully, wonderfully made. And what are we supposed to be doing with our lives? That This why question. Well, we're not quite going to get to the why yet, because it builds up. But we're going to go to point number three here. And for that, we're going to turn to Ephesians, the second chapter. We're going to read verse 10. For we are his workmanship, that is God's workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus, you ready for this? For good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. I'll read that again. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Oh, I think we have somewhat of a little, an answer here. We are created for good works. And by Jesus Christ, we know what those good works look like. But we are to be about doing that which is good. That is a huge part of our purpose. Huge. It says that this is what we, this is an overarching principle. This isn't something specific. So this applies to any part of your life, whether you're driving, whether you're studying, whether you're reading, whether you're eating, whether you're sleeping, it doesn't matter. We are created to do good works and to do it in all that we do. Um, but how do we know what are these good works? Because this is our purpose. We are created for these good works. This is, again, part of that purpose. Because the purpose is not just one thing. It will, as you'll see in point number four, which we're coming to, 
it does have an ultimate purpose of one thing. But to get there along the way, there's myriads of things that in, uh, are entailed here. So how do we know what good works are? Because there are also bad works. Well, God is good. Jesus himself says, why do you call me good? Only God is good. So if we want to know what is good, we need to know God. And for that, God has so graciously, so phenomenally supplied us with his word. And he sent his son, his only son, Jesus Christ, to die for our sins so that we may come to know him. And then Jesus Christ died on the cross and went to heaven so that he could send his spirit to dwell within our hearts so we could know him intimately. So we could have direct access to God to know what is good. So we are to study God's word, pray through the Holy Spirit to see whether or not something is good. I example, there's a job offer in an out of province or out of state, out of country, and you don't know what to do. Well, start looking in God's word and saying, well, how does that work with my family? Am I blessed, is God, am I blessing people where I am? Am I going to be a blessing? And you can go on and on and search the scriptures for your answer, then God will answer. And then you pray about it and say, Lord, reveal to me, give me signs, give me wonders, and he does. He very much does. I did so when I met my wife, Leah, and I asked God for a sign, and I said, Lord, I need to know if this is from you. I need to know if Leah is the one. And so I asked him for a sign. I said, Lord, I need to see for myself in a way that I understand and that you communicate to me that together we are better than we would be if we were apart. That was my, I asked for a sign, to, that somehow God would show me that we were better together during our courtship, that we were better together and did things in a way that we would not have done when we were apart. And you know what? God answered. Not once, but twice somebody came to me and lit, two different people at two different times said literally those words said, you know what, together you guys are doing something that I've never seen before and it is so encouraging and you have been a blessing. Can you imagine? God cares. God has good plans for us. And it was a good thing to marry my wife. For a good wife is a blessing from the Lord indeed. Another, the, we want to talk about the Bible. 2 Timothy 3 verse 16 says that all scripture is given by inspiration of God, is profitable for doctrine. Remember we said doctrine is a way of rules for which we live our lives. Doctrines for reproof, for corrections, for reproof when you have to, when you need to tell somebody that they're wrong or you need to correct somebody else. And for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Study God's word. Learn what good works that God has in store for you. Jeremiah talks about the plans of the Lord being only good for you, not to harm you. God's plans never are to harm you. I resisted going on a missions trip when I was in my young teens, because I thought that I, if I went on a missions trip, that God would turn me into some sort of zealot missionary going to all corners of the globe, and I didn't want that. I didn't want that, so I resisted going. I never pursued it, but eventually, God broke down my heart, and I said, you know what? I'm going to go on a missions trip. I'm going to stop running. I'm not going to be like Jonah, and I did. And I prayed about it, and God said it was a good thing for me to go. And while he was there, he showed me that, yes, you are a missionary. But the mission field is here, right back in Canada. So here I am, doing good works. 
Now, man's purpose. What is this again? Okay, so you could say, yeah, our purpose is to do good works. Eh, close. We are created to do good works. But we've got the last and final point to make, and it's a doozy. 1 Corinthians 10. Therefore. That means in conclusion of, the finale of. Therefore. I love therefores. Whether you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. When we're doing all these works that we're to do, and even when we're doing the mundane things, whatever we do, we are to do it for God's glory. And 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 11 states this explicitly. If anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it as with the ability which God supplies, that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and the dominion or sovereignty forever and ever. Amen. So before we had very broad statements. We are created to do good things. We had a few specific good things. We're to have dominion over the earth. We're supposed to be male and female. We're supposed to uh, love one another. We actually didn't get into that. It's a whole Micah 6 verse 8 says we are to do, act justly, love mercy, and to walk humbly before God. The Bible's full. We could go on and on and on and on. But here we have an inclusive statement that covers everything. A pinnacle here. It says, in all things. That means there is nothing exempt from this statement. In all things, God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. God's glory, his glory is at the point. That is why, that is our purpose. To glorify God because everything is His. Everything points to Him. He created us. He is God Almighty. He is sovereign. He rules. He created. Everything belongs to Him. It says here, to whom belong the glory. The glory does not belong to anybody else but God. It says all the glory and dominion. Or the sovereignty is forever and ever. So this statement said, in all things, for all eternity, before, now, and for all time. So yes, in a nutshell, our purpose is to glorify God in all those good things we do, in all the image-bearing things that we have, and even when we were fearfully and wonderfully made, God did all this for His glory, that He can show His magnificence. So, whatever we do, we do all for God's glory. We are created in Christ Jesus to do good works, and those good works are to be done to God's glory. The image that we've been made, the things that we are to boast to be about, again, what? For God's glory. Because it belongs to Him. So now in conclusion, I'd like to say, now that we've discovered and seen that God's glory is what we are to be about, how are you glorifying God every moment in everything of your life. Do you take time to meditate? Do you take time to read the good news, the Bible? Do you read God's letter to you, his personal letter? That's a big letter. And every time you read it, you discover something new, something deeper, because God has an infinite depth and an infinite breadth. My God is so great. So strong and so mighty, there is nothing 
that God is not sovereign of, that God is not control of. So brothers, sisters, children, I hope too, who are listening, look at your life. Take a moment, close your eyes, and ask God to show you the areas that you need to give up. Ask God to show you the areas that you need to give in. And rejoice in the areas that you are, that God is being glorified, because He is all in all. So well, thank you for being with me as we took this journey. Please, it is our purpose to glorify God. And when we don't, there are consequences. I don't want to go into that because I felt like this message just needed to be of joy and wonder that God is to be glory. And we can revel in God's glory. When we glorify God, He shares. And He shares with us so please, close with me now as we pray. God Almighty, glorious Father in heaven, Lord, indeed, hallowed be thy name. Yours, as you, your son says, is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. You are our God. We are your people that you made so fearfully and wonderfully. Thank you, O oh God, for reaching into our lives and dragging us out of our miry pits. We do not deserve any goodness, Lord. We, we regularly do not glorify you in so many areas. And yet you shower your love and your kindness upon us. Oh Lord, blessed be your name. For without you, we are nothing. Without you, there would be nothing. Oh Lord, please bless those who are your children around the world this day. And may we do so, sing your praises. May we think your the good and glorious thoughts for your glory, for your kingdom, through your Son, our Savior, and by your Holy Spirit, I pray. Amen.
Oh, thank you, James and Emmy Lou, for uh, your leading uh, today. And uh, I want to close with a benediction from the end of 2 Corinthians. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.